Yo, 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 we are back in the studio looking at some power files with my boy, Fergalicious. Now, we're going all the way back to the LaGrange Classic cycling race that was a few weeks ago, but this is a particularly special event and power analysis because my boy, Fergalicious, soloed for over half the race. And we've won a few races since I've been on Texas Roadhouse, but this race was especially awesome because all the big hitters were there. I mean, Legion had a squad there, American Cycling had a squad there, ButcherBox had a squad there. I mean, like most of everybody that races crits were there. So to win this race solo is a kind of a big deal. And Ferg now has a pretty big target on his back because they're not gonna let him do that again, at least willingly. Uh, maybe they let him slide for, for this race, but now they know who he is. So now he's a marked man. But here we are looking at his power files once again. We're in for a doozy. This one's gonna be exciting. Let's start off with, obviously there's big questions. What does somebody's power look like solo off the front of a professional crit versus in the group? Hey, that's a good question. And we can answer that question because Ferg was in the group for the first 25 minutes of the race and then he soloed for 35. So we can actually compare those two things and look at them. Now, the first big thing that I want to point out difference wise between when he was in the group and when he was solo was that when he's in the group, there are a lot more zeros. Now I'm looking at WKO, all of the power that I'm looking at today is gonna to be normalized power. So when you see a number with a watt behind it, a big W, that's normalized power. But first of all, I wanna look at more zeros in the group. Now, what I mean is look at these blue lines are all the times that Ferg was at zero watts. And if you look at the first 25 minutes right here versus the second half of the race, Obviously a lot more blue lines in the first half when he's sitting in the group just coasting. And that makes sense. When you're in a solo move, you can't you can't draft off of people. You're not gonna be just sitting up in the group. You're gonna be on the gas pretty much the whole time. So obviously there's more zeros in the group than when he's solo. That makes sense. Now, the other thing I wanna point out about when Ferg was in the group versus solo is that there's more sprints in the group. So not only are you've got, you know, one extreme zeros, but now you've got the other extreme of really, really high power. And if we go all the way to these dark red lines, again, in the WKO, this is the highest power zone that they've got uh, created for Ferg. There's red lines all over the place in the first half of the race. In the second half of the race, there's one red line from where he went into that super high anaerobic power zone. So obviously he's burning some more matches being in the group because he's got to put out those huge bursts of power over and over and over again. Whereas when he was solo, I'm gonna get there, but there weren't as many sprints. And since we're talking about power zones, we should probably look at the power zone that you would imagine Ferg was probably riding in, his threshold power. So if we look at our threshold power here, you can see it for the first half of the race, a little bit of time in threshold, but like I said, it's a lot more jumpy. He's either at zero or he's going all out. If you look at when he's in the, in the solo move off the front, a lot of that time is spent at threshold. Now, I do want to say one stipulation here. Don't just go to the next race and think, oh, I could do threshold for an hour. Let me try to solo this race because it isn't that quite easy. The thing is, is Ferg has a pretty high FTP, which means he can do this and it works because his threshold is, his threshold power zone is actually so high that it's fast enough to hold off the group. Whereas a lot of people's threshold isn't that high. So they do need to stay in the group because they need the drafting and the energy and the energy saving of being in the group and the momentum that comes with that. Now Ferg, like I said, he's got Watts. And if we look exactly at how much time he spent in his FTP slash FRC zone, you can see that he spent 37% of the time of this race, this one hour race, 37%, he spent in 380 to 530 watts. Now, his 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 FTP is about 380, and I know that because in a Instagram story earlier this year, he put out that he averaged 400 for his 20-minute test. If you take 95% of that, that's 380. 
So that's public knowledge. His FTP should be 380. If you do your 20 minute test and you think that's your FTP, so if he thinks that 400 is his FTP, then you haven't done some math there. You gotta, you gotta take off that 5%. So his FTP is actually 380. So this FTP FRC zone, that it, these are zones that are auto created within WKO based off your FTP is obviously from his FTP and above. And it, but, it, but it's excluding those really, really high power zones where, you're over, where he would be over 530 watts. So 380 to 530. So he's actually riding the majority of this race slightly over his FTP. And you're probably thinking, hey, dude, where's the actual power file? All you've talked about is his different zones and stuff. Yeah, I know, we're getting there. It's right here, actually. So this is the power file from the race. You could see the group effort versus the solo effort. And obviously, like I said, the group effort is a lot more sporadic. There's a lot of sprints. There's a lot of drops in power. And as soon as he gets off the front, you can, you can, I don't even have to point it out. You can see where it happens. It happens right there. He, he puts in a good attack. And then after that, it's steady, 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 all the way to the finish. Now, this is a pretty cool power file to look at. He is so consistent when he's solo off the front. He had told us that he could, you know, there's a couple turns down on the back side of the course. The course is downhill one side, two sharp turns, and then an uphill. He said that on that uphill, he'd, he'd get it up, you know, he'd accelerate up to 600 watts and then slowly come down from that as he climbs up the hill. And then he gets to recover on the downhills, but he's still pedaling on the downhills. So again, all of this is like number overload, but uh, he's carrying more momentum on the download. He's more consistent on the uphill makes sense and you can see how consistent he was now one thing that i did want to point out as you can see from this little arrow is that ferg was smart and that he didn't blow all his matches in those first 20 laps that he was off the front because he knew that in the last five or six laps of the race or the last eight laps of the race that the teams that were in the peloton were going to go to the front and just blow through their teams to try to bring back Ferg because they're thinking, wow, there's only eight laps left. This guy's been off the front for a long time. We really need to bring this back. And that's exactly what happened. I'm sitting top 10 watching Miami Knights blow through their guys. Brian Gomez going super hard for a lap. Uh, Legion of Los Angeles, Robin Carpenter on the front, Ty Magner on the front. These guys are going as hard as they can for one lap and peeling off and going and slotting back in. And the announcers were saying they were gaining like one second, if that, on some laps. Now, that is a good feeling when you're off the front and the strongest teams in the field are chasing you down and they're only gaining one second per lap. That tells you something. And that's awesome. But despite that, Ferg was smarter than that and he was able to save some juice in the tank for those last six laps. You can see from six to go, to five to go, to four to go, Ferg actually increases his power on that climb every lap. And then in those last three laps, I don't know if he knew he had it or if he just didn't have any juice left in the tank, but he actually drops off the power of the last three laps, but that's okay because he won with about a 15 second gap. So pretty impressive, but I wanted to point out that he did save some juice for those last few laps because he knew that the field would be chasing that much faster. And once again, we've gotten through this whole video and we actually haven't even looked at any specific numbers. So here we go on some specific numbers. Drum roll, please. Let me cover this up because I don't want you guys to see this because it's kind of cool. And I want you to, you know, be on the edge of your seat, you know, like, like some Steven Spielberg directing here with my hand cover. Uh, all right, so for the first 24 minutes of the race, Ferg is in the group and his normalized power is 387 watts. Now let me, 35 minutes off the front, his normalized power is lower when he's off the front, 379 watts. Watts. Now, one thing that I didn't look at that I probably should have looked at was his average power. And if you, if I had to guess, I'd say his average power for the second half of the race was probably a little bit higher because he was actually pedaling more the second half of the race being solo than he was in the first half. The reason the normalized is so high the first 
half is because there's some zeros in there and those zeros basically get taken out, which we've already looked at. He didn't have as many zeros in the second half of that race, but still kind of interesting that his normalized power was actually lower when he was off the front. And there is one more chart in WK that I kind of find is interesting and it, it kind of shows you your recovery between efforts. Now, WCO, w, I haven't put in all of Ferg's workouts for the last whatever six months, so this chart isn't gonna be super, ac super accurate because it's only using a couple days worth of power files that Ferg has sent me. And so, but you can kind of get the picture here. So this purple line, the yellow is the power, but the purple here shows us if he's recovered enough to go hard again. So you can see as soon as the race starts, that purple line starts to drop because he starts out really fresh. And as the race progresses, he gets more and more tired. And if you drop below that gray line, that's kind of telling you you haven't quite recovered and you can't go hard again. Now, like I said, this chart isn't accurate. So if it was, the purple line would be coming back over that gray line a lot more often. But you can still see where the purple line is dropped a lot further when he's in the group, whereas when he's solo off the front, which you would think would be a harder effort, and maybe it was, it was maybe not harder is the right word, different is the right word, more consistent is the right word. He's so much more consistent with his efforts that he's actually able to recover more being off the front than he did in the group. There were a few times where the purple line dropped back or jumped back up to baseline, but you can see here while he's off the front that it's consistently jumping back up to that baseline over and over and over again, again, until the last five laps when he emptied the tank. I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, the last thing that I guess I kinda have to do because this is the Drew Gilman YouTube channel and and I don't know, just to compare, I guess, Ferg's outstanding ride versus my mediocre sit in the group cover moves ride, just to compare those two efforts. Like I said, if we look at his power, his average watts for the first half were 387 and then 379. If we look at mine, mine was 354 for the entire race. I was sitting in the group the whole time. I like to include heart rate because that kind of shows you how hard I was going. My max heart rate is about 200 beats per minute. I have seen 200 already this year. So you can see here, my average heart rate is 181. My max is 192. So you can kind of gauge it is a pretty hard, pretty hard race, but not the most hard race that we'll be doing this year. It's still early in the year. The LaGrange Classic isn't a high priority race. Uh, there's bigger races on the calendar that are gonna be, these numbers are gonna get beat for sure. But for Ferg, it was a pretty big race and a pretty big effort. And I commend him and kudos to him for finally getting that big W, that big win. He deserves it. Thanks again, Ferg, for sending me your power files. If you guys like these kinds of videos, be sure to like them, share with them, with your buddies and all that kind of stuff. And uh, be sure to support me however you want to. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching this. Thanks. See you. No.